Sport Fishing on the Fly is brought to you by Togan's Fly Shop, Maui Jim Sunglasses, and Hardy Rods and Reels. Good day everyone and welcome to another segment on the bench. Today I'm going to tie you up my uh, hopper dropper rig here. This is my hopper I like to use when I'm hanging nymphs below it. Um, it floats very, very well, and uh, you can you can hang a fairly fairly heavy nymph underneath this one. I know a lot of hopper patterns, uh, the basic patterns just kind of sit in there. They should be fished alone. They kind of sit nice and flat in the surface and so forth. But uh, this foam hopper that I've got here is very buoyant, and you can uh, you can put a decent weighted uh, nymph under it. So if you can fish two rigs, I know. Uh, are two flies in your zone where you're fishing? It's a, uh, it's a good way. Hopper dropper is a very, very popular way to to fish in the fall. So let's go over the materials we need to tie the fly. I'm going to be using a Daiichi 1280. This is a 2x long, uh, size six hook. I'm going to be using some six aught yellow thread. We'll be using some polypropylene. This is the floating yarn for the pair pair post. And uh, for the body, I'm going to be using some foam. This is uh, larvae lace uh, foam. This is the nice open cell foam. Uh, it also comes hairline. It has a one eighth foam uh, green here. This is the color. This other larvae lace, just a little pinch thicker than that, but um, that gives you all the buoyancy you need to uh, to drop a nymph below it. I'm going to use a here's just a Cree neck. This is just a cheaper neck I'm going to be using for this oversized hackle. I'll be using some rubber, barred rubber legs for the legs. Get a nice little action when you're kicking along in the water. Some red uh, crystal flash for under the wing. And the wing I'm going to be using a quill, turkey quill segment. And I always uh, take my turkey quills and I'll spray them with the uh, Artist Fix-A-Tiff. That just uh, keeps them from splitting. They're a lot tougher. So we want our flies to hang together and then also I'm going to use some solar res uh, thin hard to finish the fly off. Okay we'll get a hook in the vise here and we'll get started. Before we put the hook in the vise I do need to cut my foam. It's going to take a pair of scissors cut along here about uh, probably an eighth of an inch or so. Go a couple sizes on this, but basically size six if you're dropping nymphs and blow it's that's a pretty good size. And then what I do is I poke my foam through the or my hook through the foam. I tie it from the bottom up. It's so easy to tie it from the top down, but then you've got the shank of the hook exposed. I don't like that look. I like it from the bottom. I want the fish to see uh, my fly. Properly, we're going to cover the top of the wing anyway. Okay, we'll get our thread here. We'll get a thread base down. You can use smooth thread on here, but it seems to slide around a little more. This foam is really tough; pretty hard to cut it. Okay, so I get my. I'm just bought the point of the barb there below. And I'm coming with my first segment. I'm going to that's my tying point. I'm going to get two or three good turns on there, and then I come over the top where I want my next segment, and then I'll take a couple more turns, tighten that up, and you see the foam is on the top. That would be on the bottom. That wouldn't look very good to the fish. I'm just going to. Uh, I'm going to cut this off in a V at the end, kind of make it look like a hopper. So remember when you're coming, you can go straight through, your segments are nice and straight. Want to go to the next segment, you go from the top. And then I'll come in the top, just on the shank of my hook there where I want my segment to be. And then I can go around, make sure your thread's in the same spot, and go around a couple two loose turns, come around forward, take a couple loose turns, you can tighten them up as you go. Come forward ahead and 
you can get the segments a lot evener than that. Let me go back here. I failed you somewhere. But see how tough that is? I put a lot of heat on that and that foam is strong. So on a fly like what I want, um, more so for buoyancy, I'm not going to put as many segments in. I'm not trying to get the, the look as much as the flotation. A little bigger, so you got bigger segments there now. And then the front behind the eye here, I'm just going to tie that off so we can Pull that foam, make sure it's all tied down good. A good head. I'm done with the head there now. I don't I'm just gonna go to the back neck segment here. And also to kind of tone that down, I like to use a brown marker pen on the bottom. And I'll just darken that up a little bit. This looks a little more natural. I don't like it too yellow. I'll just soften it up a little bit. Okay. I'll take a couple strands of my red crystal flash. Fold it over. Fold it over twice. Uh, right on the top. I cut that just a little longer than the end of the fly there just so it peeks out behind the wing. I'll come in here for the wing. Got a nice wide clip of that turkey. This is a little bit thicker in here. This is the thinner portion. Fold it in half. Cut a V on the end there. Then I get a nice Segmented wing that comes out just past the body. You can have as little or as much as you want. I kind of leave it, I like it kind of brown. That, but you see the red is poking through underneath there a little bit at the back. I'll get some good turns in there. This is a very durable fly too, but it floats like a top. Then we'll bring in some polypropylene. Tie that on the top. And I'll just go around, build a bit of a base around it. I'm going to use some uh, solar res on that too, so we'll stuffing that up a little bit when I hit it with the light. Okay, then I'll bring in a couple, one of my I take one strand of the rubber legs, I split that down the middle then I take about a third of the leg to the front. Turn that on the sides. You can put, pull them around a little bit. Solar is going to hold that on too. A little pressure on that now. Got them where I want them. They're basically staying there pretty good. But it really kicks along nice when you want to give a little action in the water. The fish are looking up. That little kicking action, that'll that'll wake some of them trout up for you too. That'll really inspire them to come, come hit. So we'll just bring in one of our hackles in here from that neck. Nothing fancy. It's, I think that's a great three neck or something. It's nothing special. Foam basically holds the fly anyway. There. Make sure it's tied in good. There it is. Then I'm going to whip finish right here. 
I say, just a minute now, you're not done tying your fly yet, how come you're cutting your thread off? The rest is all going to get done with my UV. The way I start doing my parachutes, I kind of like how it works. So I'll bring my UV in here. A little lamp. And you could wet finish this off too if you don't have the UV. It's fine, but I'm, I'm using the this is not bone dry. I usually use bone dry, but it soaks in too much. I want it set and kind of on the outside. Do my thread head there. Got the legs in all in one swoop. Then I've got myself a set of hackle pliers here. And it's pretty, this wing's pretty soft right now because I haven't tightened it up yet with my base. Doesn't have much of a base right now. I pull it tight. And I'll just grab my little torch. Cook it on. There it is. It's all held together with UV. Kind of lands a little nicer, that's why I like the parachute. Just clip that off. Just kind of helps it float down a little nicer, but uh, not a big component for the fly, it just finishes it off. The foam is going to make this fly work, there's no question about that. If you want the post down a little bit further, you can, but that, that works just fine. And, and uh, like I say, you got the little red. Underneath the kicker, like to imitate the below the legs, they have that little red on the inside of their legs. So it all helps, a little glint, but you can just you can just tie a tag on there, your dropper right, right in right in behind. You can either hang it off the the front, some guys like to tie it off the eye, or some guys like to tie it off the bend. So well, there you go. That's my little hopper dropper and hope that uh, works for you. Get out on the, the rivers. I know Bow River for one. We spent a lot of time fencing dropper rigs over there and there's many other good water bodies all over the the country that you can fish a hopper dropper. So hang a little nice little nymph in below it and you're in business. Thanks again for watching. We'll catch you again real soon.